What's going on fellas? Today we're doing some experimenting with waste oil burner pumps, oil pumps and fuel pumps. Now this is kind of uh, a detailed subject because there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're trying to find a pump to actually run a reliable burner. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you look at the reviews for some of these pumps guys, they're just terrible. Um, so you really got to be careful what you're picking. This is the pump I'm going with. Some of these pumps are just uh, a shot in the dark. A lot of them are not reliable. All right, so just a quick performance test. Typically, it would be very hard to get waste oil to travel through this much hose and to an elevated position like this. I have the pump, the oil tank. Let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna open the oil. I'm just going to go ahead and turn this thing on here. It's very pulsy. That pulsation is not good for a consistent burning. I just want to see what it can do. Way too much, of course. That's like uh, <laughs> probably 800 kilowatts. This thing's currently running at about 0.3 amps. 300 milliamps or so, 380. And that's about as low as of a flow that I can get out of this thing. That's a little over 300 kilowatts right there of flow rate. So that's just way too high. If I turn this thing down to the very lowest setting, it just drops off completely and stops pumping. So it's a little large for very low flows. But um, a bypass valve could definitely solve that problem. One of the reasons why I went with this particular pump is because of durability. So this is a $40 pump. I'll leave the link in the description for this particular unit for the specifications and all that. Um, I will also leave a link in the description for this pulse width modulator. This is a motor speed controller as they call it. And this transformer. These were very cheap. The uh, speed controller is like 11 bucks, and the transformer is pretty cheap also. This, these are great transformers. I've had a lot of success with these things. And then we'll see what this thing looks like on full power. So that's a tremendous amount of energy right there as far as a burner goes. I'm going to be running these burners we see right here on some waste oil. But I want to set them up on a 12 foot step ladder. So that they're very high in the air and it's very hard to get the fuel up to them. And we're going to see what we're able to do in that scenario. Also, I want to try this pump on this particular nozzle. It doesn't work as good as it could on waste oil because of the very small diameter of the interior fuel pen stock. So we'll see what it does on full power. Definitely maxes out the flow. Pulling like 12 amps, you guys. It's pretty incredible. Uh oh, I'm leaking a bit there. Anyway, let's show you this before we lose it. That is a substantial amount of flow. Alright, I'm just going to do a real crude flow rate test on this thing, real quick. Hey, that's the flow rate we're going with. That is really small. I want to guess that that's probably about. 30 kilowatts, that's not a lot. Now technically we can do the math off of what we just seen right there. Here's the mathematical formula that I produced to come up with these figures. Now this may exist somewhere in open literature, but I don't think it does. This is just my own little special path of how to get to a specific def destination. And basically what we've got here is 3,600 seconds in an hour. And the test took 88 seconds. And in that time, and we come up with a number of 40.9. We multiply that by 100 milliliters. Because <clears throat> that's how many milliliters were filled up or were added to the beaker in 88 seconds. We come up with a figure of 4,090 milliliters in an hour's time. We divide that by 1,000. We come up with 4.09 liters per hour. 
Typically, waste oil and diesel is approximately 10,000 watts per liter hour burned, which gives us a figure of 40,900 watts. If we then again divide that by 1,000, we come up with 40.9 kilowatts. Now, this particular type of pump is cooled by the, the fluid. Um, the ones I've seen that have been taken apart, the fluid actually flows right past the armature and on the brushes and everything. It's kind of weird. Automotive, truck, agriculture, and so on. We use what's called a roller vane pump. Roller vane pump. A rotor element. Sorry. Rolling elements that go inside pockets, either five or six slot pockets. It's chattering the way that would chatter. And the fact that the chattering can be changed, that just makes total sense to me. That's how this thing is able to handle contamination. Here is a better diagram, fellas, of the roller vane pump. That's why we hear that chattering. And the beauty of this particular pump, what makes it so robust, is that these have so much play. Look at the clearances that you got in here. Now, the other types of fuel pumps that have the face that look like this, this type of fuel pump would not work well with waste oil at all. That is a high-speed turbine fuel pump. So, there you have it. I'm very glad to see it pumping this extremely small amount. I'm going to go ahead and crank it up here to full power and see what it will do. Sure hates that. It's 13 amps and it sounds miserable. I think it's definitely one of those roller impeller versions. Oh man, this thing's a brute. Let's check it out here. That's a pretty phenomenal flow rate right there. I'd say that's definitely over a megawatt. Over a thousand horsepower. Oh crap. Oh. The slightest bit hot either. That was that motor was cold to the touch. Definitely has some pulsation to it. So a dampener would probably be a good idea. Now you see that pulsation? That would translate into a, a pulsating flame even. I've seen it a hundred times. I recall that a success. This is a so far working out extraordinary. So we don't have to rely on the siphon alone. Um, the reason why this is important is because a lot of my customers have found that they come out to fire up a heater or something in the cold of winter, in the morning, and the oil just won't pump the same. So we need something to beat that. This is, um, let's see, you're looking at about 30, about $70 worth of equipment to pull that off, though. That's the problem. That's why I don't sell oil pumps with any of my burners. I just go with straight siphon because based on the buying patterns of equipment like this that I sell, nobody is really wanting to fork over the extra cash for the pump. Not usually. It's rare. And it's usually a company owner when they do. So I am going to go ahead and deploy this in a better fashion. Maybe find some type of enclosure for this thing. But uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of testing with these burners. With this pump. Especially this one right here. Which has an extra small aperture. Making it very difficult with thick cold oil. Alright fellas very late we won't be able to do any testing tonight but tomorrow morning first thing I'm going to try to get this thing fired up in an elevated position and we're going to examine the performance of this thing running an oil burner that's higher up than the fuel tank that's something that's not easy to do finding a good oil pump for a decent price can take you a month of research trust me I know where do you think we ended up here from now you can just go out and buy a three, four hundred dollar oil pump made specifically for pumping oil or heating oil, but that's that ain't how I roll. It's very hard to do that. You don't necessarily need a gear pump to pump oil. I find that these fuel pumps are doing a fairly suitable job. 
I am going to be doing some endurance testing and I'm going to run one of these things for like a year and we're going to come back to this video and um, we'll, a year later we'll have a video on this very pump to see how it survived. I'm probably going to be doing a tear down also. We got to see what's going on with the commuters inside this motor, what type of buildup and filth gets in there and stuff like that. Definitely going to need to be filtering this waste oil before it's used.